today's lecture, Digging into the Earth's Past, and I hope that you will enjoy each single moment with us today. May I ask you, please, use your headphones, okay, and you can control the sound from your computer. To know where you have been, where are you are going, you have to know where you have been. So let me introduce to you a German meteorologist who studied weather, Mr. Weniger. Mr. Arthur Weniger, who came to consider in 1912 the existence of a single supercontinent from about 250 million years ago. This giant land mass and the supercontinent was called Pangaea. This is Pangaea here. The word Pangaea means all lands. This describes the way that all the continents were joined up together. He presented also the idea of the continental drift. The idea that the continents have moved over the surface of the earth over geological time. And you can see this here, okay, from the maps. He said here, believe me, the continents are moving. He tried here, he was trying here to convince the other scientists and to prove for them that the continents are moving. Look at the maps here, you can see the diagrams here. The diagrams here showing the evolution of the earth from Pangaea, okay, this is Pangaea, to the present day. Pangaea was drifted apart and the continents separated into Laurasia, Gondwana land, and so on until we come to the present day. Let me be more clear for you and show you this in animation. And you will consider that the map of today was completely different from the past. Let's see the animation. Let me show it to you again. Sorry. You can see here, okay, the map of Gondwana, the map or the continent Gondwana, it was separated into different continents. And the numbers here represents here on the left side, the billions of years. Okay, then it is still drifting, still separating the continents till we reach the present day map. And you will see it now. That's it. This is the present day map. Pangaea is best known. Why? Because it is possible to reconstruct it from the current continents. But Mr. Weniger, okay, he was devoted his whole career to studying this and come up with the proof, you know, more, more proofs. Okay, so by looking at the map here, the global map, we can see that the east coast of South America here, if you concentrate well, the south coast, the, the east coast of South America seems to fit perfectly like a puzzle, okay, into the west coast of Africa, okay? And so do, so, so the other continents will do the same. They can fit with each other. So he believed that this was not happened randomly, okay, or coincidence, but that was not enough for him. So he dug for more evidence. This represents now the apparent fit of the continents. And for more evidence, let's look at this map here. We can see at this on this map here, identical fossils. Okay, or fossils, either animal fossils or plant fossils, okay? So the plant fossils here, you can see that uh, they are here in Australia or either in Antarctica or Af um, uh, either Africa or South America, etc. Okay, and the, also the animals. Let's talk for example. Let's take for example the mesosaurus. Okay, the mesosaurus fossils found in the eastern coast of South America here. Okay, and western coast of Africa. So the mesosaurus. Let me tell you something about it. It lives, it was, okay, living in the shallow fresh water, okay? So he cannot survive in the salty water. And you know, there is an, there, there's an ocean here, 
So he cannot survive in the salty water, okay? He cannot also fly or swim. And there is no evidence proof that that area was frozen before, so he walked there. It means that the continents were once connected and drifted apart. And this becomes another evidence, the fossil correlation. He dug again to come up with a stronger evidence. This time, he found something about the geological structures. Let's look at the map here. The mountain range of the north eastern of the United States here, okay? And the mountain range in the northern of Europe, they match up perfectly. And I mean here, the same type and age of rocks. And this becomes another evidence, rock and mountain correlation. He looked also at the past climate data and you know that he, he studied weather, weather, so he has an experience about this, okay? He found some, something very interesting, interesting thing, the glaciers. So we know the glaciers that was found, or we found them on top of mountains and North and South Pole. But something more interesting about these glaciers I want you to focus well that when they move here, okay, on the rocks, they leave a scratch. You can see the scratch here, scratches here. They leave a scratch over the rocks, as you can see in this photo. We call these scratches glacial striation. So maybe you will ask yourself, what is the relation between the glaciers and the continental drift? But what if I tell you? that he found something captivating, also more interesting about these glaciers. If we look at the rainforest of the South America, here of South America, uh, of South uh, Africa, sorry, of South Africa, and here, uh, rainforest of South also America and Africa, both of them are in these areas here, okay? You will find glacier striations here and there. Okay, and maybe also you will ask yourself that how could there be glaciers in tropical rainforests? Unless it wasn't always tropical. The theory was, you know, initially not accepted. They didn't believe him, maybe a few people, okay? However, within a few decades, that was all to change. And it paved, okay, the way for another theory called the plate tectonics that scientists have now accepted to explain the Earth's continent's move. Okay, the Earth, our active planet. Okay, so from the deepest ocean trench, okay, to the trench to the tallest mountain, the plate tectonics explains the features of movement of Earth's surface in the present and the past. Let me before talk about the plate tectonics, okay? Explain to you something. This is the structure, the structure of the earth or the anatomy of our earth, okay? You can see this is the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core, okay? And there is a, a layer called the lithosphere, which represents here the, the continental crust, the ocean, oceanic crust and the upper most uh, layer of the mantle. Uh, this is here a rigid, okay, mantle, okay? So the plate tectonics theory states that the lithosphere, okay, the rock, the solid outer part of the earth, okay, uh, which represents, as I said, the crust and solid uh, uppermost mantle is separated into plates that move over the asthenosphere. What is the asthenosphere? It is here. It is the molten upper portion of the mantle. Let's find out more. How plate tectonics work? The driving force behind plate tectonics is the convection currents in the asthenosphere here, okay? It's partially melted and very hot, hotter than the, um, the lithosphere. 
what material near the Earth's core here, near the Earth's core, rises and colder mantle rock sinks? That, that's because of the convection currents. So it is a kind, you know, of like a pot boiling on a stove. Okay. So there are two types of lithosphere. The continental lithosphere, which is found on land, you can see the photo here, it's clear. And while the oceanic lithosphere makes up the sea floor, as you can see here, this is the sea floor, okay? Most tectonic activities take place at the boundaries of this place, where they may collide, tear apart, or slide against each other. Uh, here in this photo here, you can see that um, they are here um, collide here. We call this convergent also. And maybe they will tear apart. We call this divergent. And or they can slide against each other. We call this also transform. Okay? Okay. So because of this movement or of the plate tectonics in the boundaries, okay? Tectonic activities is responsible for many natural events. These include the earthquakes and volcanoes, as you can see here. And here we come to another thing, very important. Here we come to the Mediterranean salinity, salinity crisis. The Mediterranean salinity crisis is another proof of plate tectonics. A little more than five to six billion years, million years ago, tectonic activity close to the Strait of Gibraltar, eventually causing the Mediterranean Sea to shrink and its mineral content to spike. Salt and gypsum deposits are not observable in many, um, are now observable in many of the countries that surround the Mediterranean and are now exposed as rocks above the modern sea level. Let's find out more about the Mediterranean salinity crisis. Okay, and here we come to the geologic time scale. The geologic time scale is the calendar for the events in the Earth's history. Used by, it's used by geologists, paleontologists, and other Earth scientists. You can see here that it is divided into five units or the units, okay? What are these units? Aeons, eras, epochs, periods, age, and so on. You can notice that the time scale here was developed through the study of physical rock layers and relationships at ships, as well as the times when different organisms appeared, evolved, and become also extinct through the study of fossilized remains and imprints. It was started since here, the foundation of the earth since 4.6 billion years ago one important thing also about a moment about the geological time. The transition from the Mesozoic era here, okay, to the Cenozoic era, okay, it's, um, about 65 million years ago. 
the change was motivated by the asteroid impact here, as you can see the photo here, that eventually killed the dinosaurs. So all of these events fit together like a puzzle, okay, to give researchers a common language for discussing the, dis the, dis the distant past. Geological strata. So strata means layers also. So rock layers give us a clue. Earth has gone through incredible changes, okay, within its 4.6 billion years. So with such history, how can researchers keep track of what happened and when? A careful study of a rock layer can be enough to help a researcher or researchers figure out its age and more. So, but, but you don't have to get your hands on a time machine or travel through time, you know, to notice the chain between the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic era. Tell me how, I'll tell you. Ending of the Mesozoic era and beginning here, I'll explain you, ending of the Mesozoic era, okay? And beginning of the Cenozoic era, okay? Is marked was with a layer containing usually high iridium, levels of iridium, this is the uh, high levels of iridium layer here, okay, which is more, well, more common in meteors than the Earth's crust. So the, there was an event happened here, okay, and separated the Cenozoic era from the Mesozoic era, okay? And we call this the Keti boundary. The Keti boundary is a geological signature. This one is a geological signature okay, of the transition between the Cretaceous and the tertiary period 65 million years ago, or we can say between the Cenozoic era and the Mesozoic era. So rock layers give us a clue. Let's find out what is iridium. Let me show you. This is the iridium here. The iridium, it has an atomic number 77, number 77, okay? Still very white from the platinum group, very hard and, br very hard and brittle, second dentist element after osmium, most corrosion resistance metal, even at temperatures as high as 2000 centigrade, often found within impact craters used in deep space satellites. Okay, here we come to the fossil slide, okay? If you see a rock or a layer like this contain, okay, contains fossils. Okay, let me give you a clue. This should be sedimentary rocks, okay? So sedimentary rocks and fossils. One key about sedimentary rocks here, that they are the only type of rocks that may contain fossils or evidence of past life. So if you see a rock, okay, with a fossil, you will know automatically now that they are sedimentary rocks. So why we cannot find, okay, fossils in the other kinds of rocks or layers like the igneous rocks, uh, you know, the origin of them like volcanoes, volcanoes, okay, or in the other kinds of rocks like uh, uh, metamorphic rocks. Why? You'll ask yourself why. Why we find them only in the sedimentary rocks here? The reason is that the processes that involve, okay, the formation of igneous and metamorphic rocks involve a lot of heat and or pressure, okay, and this will destroy and damage the, exist, the, ex, uh, the existed fossils, okay? Fossils, fossils everywhere. So fossils, what are fossils? Fossils, they here, uh, they are the preserved remains or traces of remains of ancient organisms. Shells, feathers, and leaves can all become fossils. So what do they tell us? Fossils are evidence of the Earth's past. They tell, they tell us also how life has changed over time, how Earth's surface has changed. There are clues to what past environments were like. The millions of fossils that scientists have collected are called the fossil 
the fossil record. Okay, we have many types of fossils. We have the petrified fossils, the trace fossils, the preserved remains, molds and cows, carbon films, index fossils. They are interesting. So follow me in this journey. The petrified fossils. The petrified fossils, minerals replace all or part of, or, of an organism. Okay, like this tree here. So water rich and dissolved, okay, minerals seeped into spaces, then evaporated, leaving the hardened, okay, minerals behind. You will not realize that these are fossils until you pick them up. You will feel that they're very heavy, okay? You are shocked, you will shock, okay, by their weight or when you knock on it, you will feel and hear, you know, the sound that these are not a normal tree, okay? These are petrified fossils. So, we can see different kinds of petrified wood, okay, or fossils. They're based on the patterns of these cell structures. You can see that this is different from this one and from this one, they have different here patterns, okay? So it depends on the cell, the structures, not only this. The colors here, which you see them here, okay? Depending on the minerals replaced the cells. Today, dinosaurs live only in our imagination, but in some areas, okay? Still a witness to creatures that were the masters one day in the past. So these are the trace fossils. Trace fossils are a fossilized mark that is formed in sediment by the movement or actions of an animal. Trace fossils provide evidence, okay, of the activities of ancient organisms. Scientists can learn about these, about their size from the footprints, diet, environment, and behavior. Okay, and we can see here also track, trackway. Let me tell you, this trackway was found in Sonora Dinosaur Park in northern Mexico. They are real. This, these were likely made by an uh, ornithopod, which wa were plant, um, you know, which, which was, you know, an, a plant eating, which were plant eating dinosaurs. You can see here from the photo. Okay. Let me say something here also. Okay, so the impression of print, okay, the impression here of these prints here, okay, left behind, of, or, or print left behind, uh, print left behind, when an animal's hand or foot pushes into the ground, and we call this a track, where they direct, directly impact, okay, the ground, um, so it's referred to us, to, uh, uh, to as a true track. As an animal takes a step, the ground below the hand or foot is compressed. Okay, as you can see here, it is compressed. Okay, the displacement forms features below the true track. These are known as the under tracks or under prints, or we can say also ghost prints or transmitted tracks. So many names for this. Okay, and prints that are preserved for millions of years. In the case of dinosaurs, sometimes you will find both tracks and underprints, okay? And in other places only, you will find one or the other which will survive. So, the dinosaurs walk all over Texas 100 to 120 million years ago. Let's think about it. Yes or no? Yes. Dinosaurs lived in the coastal shallows and offshore islands of Texas and left footprints evidence to the investigators. Okay. We can see here the trackway, which help us to learn more about the dinosaurs and their footprints. This is in Texas here. We can see here two different kinds of dinosaurs here because of the footprints, uh, um, you know, the theropods and uh, the ornithopods, okay. And these tracks um, at Dinosaur Valley State Park, Blue Hole, uh, you can compare here between the size of the human feet, okay, of human foot, 
okay, or the hands, human hands, okay, and you can feel that it is, um, they, they are huge, I mean, okay. So the trackways also help us learn more about dinosaurs. Uh, it's a scientific journey and adventure too. Okay, in 1938, the paleontologist Ronald T. Bird tracks ways, okay, track ways to Glen Rose in Texas, USA. And he discovered an amazing preserved specimen. He excavated some of the better tracks, as you can see them here. Okay, these footprints are displayed, okay, in the American Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. Here you can see also dinosaur footprints, different kinds of footprints for different kinds of dinosaurs. And you can compare between the size of the dinosaur, okay, and its foot uh, prints. Wow, here we come to the preserved remains. Another kind of fossil, of a fossil. Preserved remains, the preservation of remains with little or no change. This is the rarest form of the fossilization. You know, it's the preservation of original skeletal material and even soft tissues. So which kind of an animal is this? Think about it, it has an ivory here. Let us see. Exactly, the mammoth, the woolly mammoth, which found in the Arctic. It's a kind of a fossil, ice fossil. Ice fossils here are actual flesh remains of the organisms, of the organism. They, <clears throat> they become trapped in the ice, sorry. <clears throat> they become trapped in the ice and remain frozen until they melt. So these preserved remains allow scientists, okay, this rare opportunity to examine the skin, the hair, the organs of ancient creatures. This is not enough. Let's find out more. The insect fossils, the insect fossil in amber, the amber seals, okay, the organism from the air protecting it from decay. So what's going on here? Or what was going on there? Okay, the insect was trapped in a sticky tree resin and preserved as a resin, okay, become hard, became hard. It looks like a live, as you can see it here. It looked like a live yesterday, but they are actually millions of years old. Scientists have collected also the DNA from these remains and compared the DNA sequences with those of the modern creatures. Another kind or type of the fossils, molds and casts. So what are they? Molds, fossil that forms when our, an organism decay or dissolves and leave a cavity, like this photo here, okay, in the rock. A cast is a copy of a shape of an organism. Carbon films. Carbon films are extremely thin coating of a carbon rock. All organisms, you know, that they are made of carbon. So when they are buried, the materials that make up the organism evaporates. These gases keep leaving, you know, carbon behind. They are usually black, dark brown, or light brown in color, as you can see from the photos here, okay? Depending on what? On the type of rock that they are pressed upon. Index fossils. An index fossil is a fossil found in a narrow time range or specific time, but widely distributed around the earth. They are used to date the rock layers. Like what? Ammonites. Here I put the picture of, an, um, of the ammonites. Okay, of one ammonite actually, okay? but ammonites are excellent index fossils. This is the kind of an animal. He is, you know, you here, he is inside the shell. And this is the shell here when it became as fossils, as a fossil. 
The ammonites were the dominant life form on Earth at one time and resembled the modern day squid. Let's see. This is the squid. Okay. Fossils of rare extinct species found in UAE? Yes, yes. From six to eight billion years ago in Veteran of Abu Dhabi, a wide river supported animals such as elephants, hippopotamuses, giraffes, monkeys, okay, ostrich and cro crocodiles, okay, and so on. Here, this is a fossil bones of an extinct relative of the hippopotamus from al Dafra region of Abu Dhabi. And this is here, the view of that time. It's a reconstruction painting of the late Miocene hippos, turtles, crocodiles, okay? Um, by, by one of the ancient rivers, they are all in ancient river in al Dafra in Abu Dhabi. So now you can imagine how was the river, how was the environment, how was the creatures before in al Dafra, Abu Dhabi. Now, We come to the movie world. In the movie world, they didn't forget our beautiful earth, our earth in the past. Okay, so they make they made or directed, produced many many films about our earth in the past, about the fossils. Let me show you some of them. The Ice Age. The journey to the center of the earth and Jurassic Park. And of course, there are more and more of these films or movies about the earth in the past. Let's say goodbye now to these films. And if you look at this layer here, these layers, you know, some people they will say they're just layers, dust. Mm, some colors we can see here. So this is what some people see. And what the geologists see, what you will see now. Let us find, let's find out. This is what the geologists see. And even you now, this is what you can see. So we can see here what? Earth, the past of the earth, okay? the evolution of the earth. We can see the history. We can read about the history, the science, ETC, so many things we can observe, notice, find out, learn about now. Because you change your sights, okay? So our earth keep a record of everything since the past till the present, through time, Secret codes have gradually been broken. So, so now when you look at the earth, your beautiful earth, okay, you will see it from a different side and from a different angle. And after all this journey, I think we need to relax, to come from the past to the present life and enjoy our earth in another beautiful way. So please, Give yourself some time, few moments to relax. Let's go. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as uh, Neil Armstrong, you know, he has a quote, he said, geologists also have a saying, rocks remembers. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us in our journey today. Thank you for everyone. Thank you very much, Senma, for this nice presentation, very informative, and uh, just to see how Earth has been transformed uh, millions and millions and millions of years. And uh, I believe it is still moving, and uh, I believe things are going to change uh, for sure for us slowly, but uh, uh, in the next maybe hundreds, maybe 200, 200 million years, we'll have a different, uh, a different, uh, set up in terms of all the continents. And I believe uh, uh, from the simulation that I have seen before, so uh, uh, North Africa uh, and uh, Europe and also North America will be just uh, one single continent. Okay, so let me open the floor. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Questions, you can write them, you can chat them, or you can just uh, open your uh, microphone and ask. Any questions? People are shy today. Assalamu alaikum, ya doctor. Wa alaikum assalam, wa Allah حبيت أشكر الأستاذ سلمى على التقديم الرائع هذا وأشكركم أنتم على القائمين على المحاضرات هذه الله يعطيكم العافية إن شاء الله وهذا كله في جزيك خير إن شاء الله حسناتكم إن شاء الله في رفعة الاسم الأكاديمية شكرا شكرا جزيلا شكرا شكرا أستاذ خالد شكرا Okay, so if there are no questions I, we thank you again Ms. Selma Subhi for this nice presentation and uh, hopefully we'll see you with all the presentation for the next next month inshallah we have a couple of uh, presentations uh, thank you for participating uh, thank you selma for giving us your time thank you brother, yes. have you in our presentation so thank you everyone so have a good afternoon inshallah thank you goodbye thank you. Assalamu alaikum.